Behind me is the Sonic Wind 2 rocket sled. It was made to test the effects of extreme G-forces on biological organisms. We'll talk more about that particular sled later. I say biological organisms because this particular sled was only used for animal testing, although humans had ridden earlier rocket sleds many times. The decade of the 1950s pushed the boundaries of flight. Aviation companies and the military in the US were building aircraft with even higher performance capabilities than ever before. It quickly became evident that the most restrictive component of high performance flight was the fragility of the human body inside the craft. The common design goal in World War II era aircraft was that a cockpit seat could withstand six Gs of deceleration before failure. It was unclear at the time whether the human body could actually handle more Gs than this. Finding the limit of the human body's G tolerance would directly impact the design and performance of every aircraft and spacecraft of the future, and even inform today's automobile designs. In the late 40s and early 50s, an Air Force physician named John Paul Stapp dreamt up a program to see just how much the human body could take when it came to deceleration G-forces. His idea was to strap a test subject to a rocket sled, accelerate them to speeds of several hundred miles per hour, and then stop them in an extremely short amount of time to subject them to exceptionally strong deceleration G-forces. Often, Stapp himself served as the test subject, but chimpanzees and pigs were also common passengers on this strange vehicle. He conducted these tests with multiple rocket sleds, Tested at what was then called Muroc Air Force Base and capable of speeds in the mid 200s, the first sled was called the G Wiz. It wasn't clear at the time just how many Gs the human body could take, but one of Northrop's telemetry experts working on the rocket sled project predicted that a human would probably die at around 18 Gs. Experiments with the G Wiz quickly put that myth to bed. Stapp pretty routinely made runs with his sled that imparted more than 20 Gs of deceleration, all with either no or only minor injuries. Soon the project was moved to Holloman Air Force Base near Alamogordo, New Mexico, and White Sands. Fun fact, it's also just across a small mountain range from Roswell, and the balloon that caused the quote-unquote Roswell incident was launched from Holloman. Holloman had much longer tracks for rocket sleds, so Stapp immediately had a new one commissioned. This one was called the Sonic Wind No. 1. With this sled, Stapp and his team gradually stepped up the amount of Gs, trying to find the threshold for the onset of injury to the human body. How many Gs could a person take before getting hurt? Eventually, in 1954, Stapp was ready for the quote-unquote big run on the Sonic Wind 1. Before putting himself at risk, multiple chimps made the big run with different restraint configurations, trying to get the straps just right to restrain Stapp and prevent as much injury as possible. In his documentation of the experiment, Stapp described his feelings just before the run in uh, very clinical language. <laughs> Quote, subject had considerable apprehension and uneasiness with cold sweat of the axillae and palms. Finally, the clouds cleared enough to allow proper exposure for the high-speed cameras, and the T-33 chase plane was ready. The countdown started from two minutes, and the final straps were tightened across Stapp's chest to the point where he could no longer take a full Four breath. Strong nylon belts lashed him to the seat. His helmet was firmly fastened so that the fiercely screaming wind would not break his neck. When the countdown reached three seconds, Stapp pulled the lanyard that started the high-speed camera. At zero, solid-fueled rockets in a special pusher sled behind his own fired and accelerated him from a standstill to 639 miles per hour with such force that he blacked out, but not from losing consciousness. He was just thrown backwards into his seat so forcefully that the blood actually left his eyes, temporarily disabling his vision. Then the sled hit the pools of water that served as the sled's braking system. After the shattering stop, assistance sprinted toward the colonel who survived. Stapp went from 639 miles per hour to zero in just 1.37 seconds, pulling him forward against the straps with 46.2 Gs of force. This was estimated to be the equivalent of ejecting from a jet traveling 1,800 miles per hour at an altitude of 36,000 feet. This showed the Air Force that surviving a supersonic ejection was indeed possible with the right restraints. At the end of the run, emergency personnel rushed to Stapp's aid. 
Although he had injured his ribs to the point where it was difficult for him to get a full breath, his immediate concern was his vision. What do my eyes look like? Stapp asked his colleague, George Nichols. It's all just blood, replied Nichols. Stapp pressed. Does it look like anything's leaning on the eyeball on the lens? Nope, it's just blood, Nichols said. Stapp responded hopefully, maybe the retinas are still in place. Stapp would later say that it felt like his eyes were being pulled from their sockets and that it felt somewhat like the extraction of a molar without anesthetic. Unsurprisingly, when the Sonic Wind 2, capable of much higher speeds, was ready in 1955, the Air Force strictly forbade Stapp from riding it. Between 1955 and 1958, the Sonic Wind 2, which you can see here, made 21 supersonic runs down test tracks at Holloman Air Force Base and China Lake in California. Its booster sled sped it down the track using nine Sargent solid-fueled rocket motors. It used the same water braking system as the Sonic Wind 1. The Sonic Wind 2's passengers included human-shaped dummies, guinea pigs, hogs, and chimpanzees. On April 13, 1957, Sonic Wind 2 carried a chimpanzee to a speed of more than 1,326 miles per hour. That's 1.7 times the speed of sound at that altitude. Lessons learned during Stapp's research using the G-Wiz and the Sonic Wind 1 and 2 are still in use today. His findings directly apply to the design of modern safety restraints, including seatbelts in cars, airplanes, roller coasters, and more. His research was also instrumental in the design of spacecraft couches and aviation ejection seats. If you'd like to see the Sonic Wind 2 in person, come visit the Cosmosphere's Hall of Space Museum. Sources for the research of this video included The Cosmosphere and Sonic Wind by Craig Ryan.